Greetings and welcome to a new video about another control system topics. We continue with our steady state error examples. In this example, we will look at the total steady state error due to the reference and the disturbance input. So what we have is the following configuration. You can see here we have the reference, which is our desired uh, command input. And this is a disturbance we don't want. And we would like to know what the total response is due to those two inputs and how much error we have due to that uh, two inputs. Of course, we will look at our calculations step by step and also verify these calculations in simulations in MATLAB. So we have the following problem for this example, given the feedback system with G and H, and also again here disturbance and uh, reference R. These are the transfer functions for this example, for G and H. You can see this is both of them are first order and all, all stable. So in order to do the steady state analysis, your system must be stable. So we can already see from this that this is stable. What is the required calculation here? Calculate the total steady state error due to the unit step reference and unit step disturbance. So those are all unit step inputs. Okay, let's look at the solution before we move on. Let's again wrap up what actual uh, expression the formulas are for our error. Now we know for this from this diagram that the y output is then the g times h times this error. So using superposition, you can see that here. And that is just y, a partial part of the y. And also the effect of d will be also there, so d times h will be also y. But you can also write your output as y is equal to the reference minus the error. That is also possible. Now combining these two expressions, you will get this. That means this on the left hand side and this part first expression on the right hand side. If you rewrite this a little bit such that you have the coefficients from a at the left hand side and the rest on the right hand side, you get this expression, which is then the expression we require for our error, which is given here in capital letter E's, all in S domain. Now you can see here the expression for the reference and also the expression or the coefficient for the disturbance. This is very similar to that also, but the only difference is the H here in the numerator. Now using the final value theorem, we can calculate what the final value will be of that error. Now that is done using this formula, so limit s approaching to zero, s times this expression completely. That means we need to use this complete expression in here. So using parentheses, you can see it here. And we can then use the limit for each part and then taking also the s in the numerator for each part of the expression. Now this part, the first part, is the error due to the reference signal. And this is the error due to the disturbance. So they are called here as E sub R and E sub D. The combined effect of the error, the total steady state error, is the summation of these two elements. Remember here, E sub D, the disturbance error, is already here negative. So what you have is what you have calculated is, is a value which will be the negative. You just add them up here as a positive number, positive minus that value will be just minus. So we will see later on how we do that in our calculations. Now, for our case, again, the only important expression we will use here is this one. And we know the reference is a step input, unit step, and disturbance is a step input also, which is, of, of course, the unwanted signal. Now, if I now add or sub substitute the 1 over S and also the 1 over S for the R and the D in here, you can see that in blue and the pink, that's then this. And I will now lose the S here of the denominator and the numerator. And also here, you will get this expression, which is then more simplified form. If we now work out the limits, before we can move, do that, let's also substitute the G and H from here. That is actually this one. Now, once we have a substitute that, we can now simplify this by 
multiplying the numerator and denominator by s plus 8 times s plus 5. So we will also do that here. Then the result will be this. So you will get then this. And if I now also evaluate these two limits here, because they are they will approach the s will approach to zero. I add a zero here, I add a zero here. So everywhere I see a s, I make it a zero. This will be then 8 times 5 over 8 times 5 plus 120. This is the part. And this will be 20 times 8 over 8 times 5 plus 120. Now, each part here will be then 40 over 160 and minus 160 over 160. Exactly. So, in total, you will get 0 0.25 minus 1. So, I do that purposely plus 1 because this part is the disturbance error. So, you will get in total the effect, total steady state error of minus 0 0.75. And this is the total steady state error. And this minus sign means actually that our output will be larger than our input because we apply a unit step input at the reference your output or output and we will see that shortly in our simulation will be 1.75 so it is 70 0 0.75 larger if this was a positive value our output will be 0 0.25 so 0 0.75 smaller okay let's now also look at the simulation results we have first the responses due to the unit step reference and also the unit step disturbance separately this is the first for the reference and this is for the disturbance you can see for the reference that the 0 0.75 is reached so the error here is plus 0 0.25 that is shown here so there's one minus the 0 0.75 so your error is exactly 0 0.25 here and this is called the error due to the input step reference. Now, once we can also do that the same for the disturbance. This is the final value of disturbance. We know that the disturbance must be zero. So our desired response is that this will approach zero, but it is one. That means one is the final value, but I want zero. That means zero minus one is minus one. And that is the error due to the disturbance so total steady state error will be then given by this expression if i now combine this and that so add them up you will again get 0 0.7 minus 0 0.75 so you can also see that in a separate form now combining these two graphs together that will give us the response at the output for y so let's also check that total response due to the unit step reference also the unit disturbance this is then for this closed loop transfer function. And I've also labeled other parameters like overshoot and settling time, which is not the subject of this uh, example. But you can now also see here that it's indeed 1.75. We apply a 1, but you will get 1.75. That is again the conclusion that this is a steady state error or zero, minus 0 0.75. Okay, what we will now do is I will also show you this in MATLAB using the script I have prepared for this example and also show you how to generate those plots in MATLAB. So let's jump to MATLAB. Okay, we are now here in MATLAB. I already prepared the script for this example. You can see here that the S is used here to define a Laplace parameter. I do that using this command TF. This is the G, 6 over S plus 8, and this is the H, I mean this is G, this is the H, 20 over S plus 5. And this is just for the reference and all for the disturbance, so this in order to have the unit step response, but this is not used actually in this example. What you have is a total transfer function is a feedback in G times H, which is then seen from the reference, and this is, this is an actually what you have in your unity gain feedback and the minus sign indicates that we have a negative feedback. In a similar form for the disturbance input, in that case the forward gain is H and the feedback part is G. 
and that is then the minus one for our negative feedback. Now the combination of these two will give you the total response due to the reference and the disturbance. So I will now run this and we will see what kind of plot we have. So let's run this and the, the script has loaded. Now let's also check G and H. This is G, this is H. So they are all correct as we have chosen for our example. So these are the results. I can also plot or generate the total closed loop transfer function. This is then the total closed loop transfer function, which is then for T, which is a fourth order. Now what we can now do is you can say here in this case, do step and then T and then grid on to have the grid on automatically. That will give you now the response to both inputs. Now I will make it a little bit larger. It says step response, but it is a combination of these two signals. Let me go directly to the steady state value, which is our final value, which is interesting here. So let me also use the maybe that's not really necessary. Go directly to the steady state value here. You can see it is 1.75. So let me make it larger. Final value. The label here is again was for T. So let me also make that larger. Now this is done the response due to the reference and also the disturbance in SI as, as unit step input. We can also generate what I already show you in the slide presentation that we can have separate responses. So for that we use the control system designer. And in that we will then import this G and H and see the separate responses to get, uh, next to each other. In fact, the result from here already um, already proves that this is correct. So uh, let's run this. Okay, we already generate this now. I don't need the body plot, so I will just uh, close this. I also don't know, don't need the root locus. I will collapse this part. So what I need is the step response, which is actually shown here as R2Y. I can also show you the label here. So the label give you R2Y and I will make it larger. You can see what is actually shown there. So let me R to Y, but I want also not R to Y, I also want the disturbance to Y. But in order to do that, let's first go to the architecture. So first we clean up everything. We only want the step responses. This is the configuration we have. F and the H here in this block is in our case one. So we just place here one, you do enter. You do here for H also one. This C here is in our case G, so you just do G here, which also can do is you can import here. So you're going to go to this arrow and this uh, display will pop up and you can now select the G and also the H. So we can say G and then import. That is also possible. Or you can do now in this case G is here in our case the H. So, so you need to be careful what you have. This is of course a generic name, what you have can be different. And then we have our H and now we can now do OK and that will be generate the response. And this is now, let me also show you the grid here. This is now only for the reference to Y. It's also shown here, which is 0 0.75. Let me make it a little bit larger. It is not the total. So in order to do that, we also need a new, new plot and go to the unit, new step, and then we can generate more uh, responses or more uh, figures for this case. Now we can see here, input to output transfer for du to y. du is here, which is our disturbance, goes to output, that's what we need. We already have this, r to y, 
can also do different uh, configurations. So it is really depending on what you're what, where you're interested in. We will do this, the first one. That will be also included here. So the plot will also generate it. So that will be then here. Okay, I will now place this next to each other. Now you will have also this. Let me also show the grid here and also the labeling. And that will also be handy to see that next to each other. And this is already done also in the slide presentation. But now you can see it also how to do it your own. So you go to the MATLAB application, control system designer, and then you generate your responses. Again, this is the response due to the reference. And this is the response due to the disturbance. If I now also show the steady state value here, you can see it is exactly one. That means we wanted zero, but you, you get one. That means your error here is minus one and the error here is 0 0.25. 0 0.25 plus the minus one is minus 0 0.75. That's the total error you have. And we have seen that in the graph. So you can see it in separate way and you can see it in a combined way. And this concludes this example about the state error due to the two inputs unwanted disturbance, wanted reference, and that is the total steady state error, which is in this case minus 0.75. All right, if you have any questions about this example, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to share this video so that we can reach more people for this topic. See you next time and take care.